Sometimes someone cries by slipping through the cracks, but these two gum shoes are picking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. If you need help, just call a lawyer. Spoiler alert, there's shard in my pants. existential crisis because I can't mm. get this ball open with one hand and I'm because my mic stand is broken I'm holding my microphone with the other hand so I have alcohol uh, in one hand and a microphone in the other hand and frankly I don't know what to do with myself right now is it a twist off or a cork it is a cork which makes it worse so hold on well you can, teeth can't put it. it between my legs to open it ew no I don't my teeth are already jacked up I'm trying to hold the ball up between my legs and open it with my hand but the problem is I'm wearing very Slick pants. So it's pulling it right mm. out from between my legs, which feels wrong. So, hold on. I if I could open this with one hand. Existential crisis over. Yep, I could open this one with one hand if needed. All right. Great. Great. <coughs> Great. Mm. Mm-hmm. But, um, heck. But oh, heck. heck. Oh, dang mm. it. Oh, oh darn. darn. Darn, I lost the game. <clears throat> uh, hooray, I'm for the other team. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't, what am I talking? Oh, yes, the other question. Good lord, I'm tired. Mm, same. Um, the question is, uh, what are you drinking? After I'm hearing that cork, I'm curious. Yeah, continuing. Mm-hmm. To be boring. So the only thing I have in my house right now uh-huh. is this Gnawbone small batch I've been sipping on for the past, goodness gracious, month now. Because uh-huh. um, I don't I don't go through a ton of whiskey, uh, not technically speaking. Um, and the only other thing I have is a bottle of Glenfiddich 12, which I uh-huh. think is absolute rubbish. I know you're of the exact rubbish. opposite opinion, uh, but I can't uh-huh. stand it. I have essentially an, a full bottle. So I'm working on ways to make <coughs> drinks out of it. So I don't waste it. Excuse me, I'm yawning. That's so rude. I apologize. And if I can get it drank up because there's a drink that I like, then eventually I'll drink it. But until that day, I refuse to touch the stuff. Can't stand it. Hmm. Well, I am, um, uh, <coughs> I mentioned, I don't know what order anything's coming out in. I think it was the one that we released this week, so the one that we released two days before we're recording this, but who knows <laughs> when that is in relation to when you guys are actually hearing <coughs> this. <But coughs> <coughs> it was in the uh, in the Extra Credits Orc video. Uh, Evil Races video. In that yes. video, I mentioned that my favorite budget bourbon was Elijah Craig. And I drank all of the all of the whiskey that I had in my house so I had to replenish and wouldn't you know it I got a thing of Elijah Craig I wouldn't know it we're well we're both becoming old um and in our old age consistency Mm -hmm. tends to be well I had a very particular reason for grabbing (laughs) for for grabbing the the Elijah Craig and that was I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a whiskey We'll I did I do. spend quite a bit of yeah. No, continue. I didn't want to interrupt your uh, thought. I didn't realize you were still talking. I, I did spend quite a bit of money on this bottle, but it's for a very particular reason. I wanted it to last a while, and I it was fifty bucks, but it's because it wasn't a seven hundred fifty mil. It was a uh, one point seven five liter. Oh my! That I paid fifty bucks for so. <clears throat> See, I don't. I think I'm turning into a snob, um, mm-hmm. because now I, 
whenever I go to get whiskey, I feel like I end up spending at least at least fifty dollars every single time. Mm-hmm. And like I, I don't even think about. Where's oh my goodness? We are both dying this morning. My my trail of thought is trailing off. The short version of the story is, um, I am a snob and I hate it. Mm. Hey, tell me if you can hear this. <laughs> I I can and I did, and I wasn't <laughs> expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, why are farts funny? I don't know, but they are. Absolutely they are. I'm glad that happened. <laughs> well, before we're 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 gonna be um really struggling today. We apologize in advance. Sean's getting a notification on his phone, that's the most exciting thing that's happened in this whole conversation. Did you get it? Yeah, oh, so we far. both got the same alert on our phone. Sorry. This is all mm-hmm. stupid. Um, we apologize for the stupidity. Um, I got an we alert have, telling we you actually that have we're a topic. remnant next week, and we're not doing that. <laughs> oh, I got an alert saying that we have National Service Weather Advisory has issued a dense fog advisory for Richmond, and it'll be in effect until December 4th, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. But, you know, I thought it might be the same as yours, even though you're not in Richmond anyways. Yes. We're going to talk about a story. <laughs> <clears throat> we are. We're going to talk about a good story. Um, it is rather good. By, and if you couldn't tell by the title of the this episode, uh, the story is H.P. Lovecraft's The Whisperer in Darkness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, so, fun fact about this story. Uh, I, I did not like it the first time that I heard it, but in my defense, it's because... Excuse me. In my defense, it's because it was so <laughs> such a slow start. Um mm-hmm. This is when I was very, very first getting to Lovecraft, like the very beginning of listening <coughs> to it. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of just put it off to the side um, and, and went to listen to something else. And I came back to it later and listened to it from the beginning and realized this is um, this is actually one of his best. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very good. It, 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 it's it's more about uh, <coughs> a lot of Lovecraft's a lot of Lovecraft Love stories Love. are more about the implication of mm-hmm. an entity. Um, Mm-hmm. And, and much less about look at this, holy cow! And so obviously this is along those same lines, but this is one of the rarer cases where we actually get to be in the presence of one, and we don't realize it till later. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's actually one of the very very yeah. creepy stories because we get to spend some time with something terrible, and we didn't realize it at the time, and it it makes it spookier for me, and it has a lot more gravity to me because of that. So this is uh, this is in my top five for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> and they um, uh, uh, you said you don't you didn't like it at first because it starts off slow. Um, uh, you're not a big uh, Frank Peretti fan, are you? <laughs> not for many years, <clears throat> but yes. <clears throat> well, it's not for many years because that many years is how long it takes for each of his books to get started. This is accurate. But anyways, anyways okay. And slow. <clears throat> so my um uh, my uh, inappropriately short uh, and stupid synopsis of the book is as follows, and I shall give it, and then we shall uh, we shall speak. Um, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> so this is my this is my inappropriately short synopsis. It goes like this: <clears throat> Will Marth is the main character, or one of the two main characters, <clears throat> and. He um, uh, knows stories and everything. He's a folklorist. And then a bunch of rain happened and some bodies washed up in the rain. And uh, they said, hey, look, it's the Migo. And he said, it is not. And then um, uh, they said, <clears throat> uh, well, let me talk to you about how the Migo are real. And they said, the Migo are not real. You're stupid. And you're stupid for trying to convince me that they're real, you idiots. And then someone sent him a letter and said, hey... I believe in the Migo, and I'm not stupid. And he, uh, Wilmar says, hmm, well then in that case, if you really are stupid, then you must be cool. And then he sends him some letters back and forth and says, look, I have photographs, but there's nothing on them. And look, I have a phonograph, and there is something on it. 
and he says, oh, well, yeah, that's true. There's something on there. And then he said, um, uh, well, let me keep talking about it. Hey, look, I have dogs, and the dogs bark at things, and so the Mego must be real. And Wilmarth said, well, I'm convinced. And um, uh, <clears throat> so he shot some some people, and he shot some uh, <clears throat> Mego, and he shot one of his dogs, and then um, some humans <laughs> who aren't the Mego keep trying to uh, keep trying to intercept everything that he's sending to Wilmarth. And so he goes into other towns and does it. And then the, the Migo learn how to fly in, on Earth. And uh, that proves to be fatal. Um, and so they fly on Earth. They land on the roof. They, um, uh, uh, and I believe he said a dog attacked one on the roof. I don't know why the dog was on the roof, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, and, then, uh, uh, and then he said, hey. I've succeeded, I've won, I'm now friends with the Migo, and they're good guys. Come see. And Wilmar said, hmm, okay. And so he came to and see. And just ignore the fact that this letter is different than all the others. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, and then uh, he came in, and he, the, the, uh, uh, Akeley is a farmer. And he came in, and he said, hmm, there are no animals on this farm, I wonder why. And uh, the guy who drove him said, "Ah, good question." And they um uh, <coughs> they kept going. <laughs> they ignored it. And then they <coughs> and they they made it into the house. And uh, Akeley's sitting there uh, on a chair, and everything is covered up, but his face and his hands because he has to be covered up. And he's speaking, and he's speaking quietly because he has asthma apparently. Um, uh, <coughs> and he has the kind of asthma, uh, you know, everyone who all asthmatics know about this kind of asthma. He has the kind of asthma that causes you to have to sit down for two days at a time. Yes. Um, uh, it's the worst kind. And I, yeah, ooh, oh, it's rough. And um, uh, then I said, oh, but I'm going to stop my uh, stupid synopsis just so I can say this because you'd think this was part of my stupid synopsis. It's not. This is actually how it happens. He says, there are some brains in, in jars over there, and um, uh, just ignore the one that has my name on it. Don't worry about that one. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Wilmar says, okay, then I'll ignore it then, if you want me to. Like, in that case, <laughs> it's ignored. And so he talks to a different brain in the jar, and says, which says, yes, the Migo are good, and they are good people, and I'm going to be with them, and Akeley is going to be with them. And Wilmar says, well, if I, if I couldn't trust my dear friend Akeley, surely I can trust a brain in a jar. And, um, uh, How long have you been with our evil the... organization? Who? Let's see. Uh, in total? Or just since I've been a brain in a jar? Brain in a jar. Four years next week. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, um, uh, well, just go on to bed and drink this nasty coffee and uh, uh, sleep. And so I, so Wilmarth goes upstairs, and he says, hmm, well, now that I'm here, I'm no longer trusting of Akeley, so I'm going to keep my pocket flashlight and my pistol ready to go. And so he was laying there with a pocket flashlight and a pistol, then he heard whispering ready downstairs, and he went, and yeah, and he laid down, listening to it, to the whispering, and he said, hmm... And he heard part of it, and um, uh, not enough to really, really make anything out, but it was part of it. And then he went, uh, then after everyone was done talking and he figured everyone was gone, he went downstairs, and he saw, the only part of Akeley that he had seen previously was his hands and his face, and he saw the hands and the face there poised about the chair, uh, except Akeley was gone, and that caused him to become affrighted, and he stole Akeley's truck and left. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a really short episode. <coughs> Talk to you guys next week. We'll be talking about a different book. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> no, next week, uh, well, I don't know if it's going to be next week or not. The next episode we record is going to be um, uh, uh, the Insmith Chronicles video game series. Point and click <coughs> adventures. Mm. Fantastically fun. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no. <coughs> so, uh... Mm. Mm. The part about the story that I found slow in the beginning um, mm -hmm. was the section you so graciously glossed over um, mm -hmm. 
there's a there's a, a lengthy section at the beginning of this book that is just describing it, it's the setup to the eldritch horrors that we um, um, are, are are dealing with in this particular story. It's just the guys like trying to disprove all these locals from saying that these these creatures are real because obviously they can't be right. So. It's a bunch of uh, letters going back and forth between him and other people, which you don't read them. You just you're re- you're glossing over the concepts, and then he gets in touch with Akeley, who first starts kind of going against him in uh, in the um, in the paper in which all their letters are being published. And then Akeley starts sending him letters, and he's sending Akeley letters, and um, it's informative. And after you've read the story once, the 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 letters become very eerie. Um, but it's a slow start. And mm-hmm. it, but once you know what's happening in the story, it's a very very tense build up. It it doesn't feel slow anymore. Uh, this was mm-hmm. during my introduction to Lovecraft, so I hadn't um, I hadn't come to recognize the aggressive foreshadowing that he puts into all of his stories. So instead of seeing the this aggressive foreshadowing, I saw this really slow start to a story. Like this story is only this many pages long. How can we have this many pages of nonsense? Yeah, let's see. Uh, it really starts off being like crazy and interesting around the time of the reception of the phonograph recording. Mm-hmm. And in my book, obviously, all the books are going to be different sizes. In my book, the books, the 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 story starts on page seven eighteen, and the phonograph recording where the story really starts off at is on page seven thirty four. Yeah, and it's not a very long story. Mm-hmm. It probably only goes on for about that much distance again. Oh, maybe a yeah, little more. The last page of this story is a lot longer than that. 775. No, oh, that is longer. I always listen to... I've only ever... Fun fact, I Whisper in Darkness, I've only ever um, um, listened to an audiobook. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ones that is at the... Because of uh, alphabetical order, it's at the very, very end of my uh, Lovecraft and Complete Mythos, um, and I read a little bit of it at a time sometimes to refresh myself, and that's at the end of it. So yeah. I've listened to the story th- many times, never read it down on one paper, as it were. Yeah, I think my book uh, sorts them in by in the order in which they were written, um, uh, and this was written... Uh, from February to September of 1930, published in August 1931. Stupendous. Mm-hmm. Anyways, there's yeah. um. Once you get all of this stuff, that's some some proofs. Uh, we find out that Akeley is actually, actually, of course, believes in uh, these creatures, uh, the Migo, the Migo, the whatever. Oh, um, and um. He believes that they're real because they're outside of his crib all the time. So it's not like he's like, I think they might be real. He's like, they won't leave me alone. Um, but he's refusing to go public with this information, which there's so many of these people in Lovecraft stories that refuse to go public with any of their the nonsense. And it's just like, mm, well, you're going to die because of that, but whatever makes you happy. And so he's corresponding privately with our... We'll call him the protagonist. Who really knows what the protagonist in any of Lovecraft stories really are? Depends on your point of view. Um, he's starts to mail him um, privately, as opposed to sending his letters into like a, the newspaper they've been arguing on. <clears throat> and they start this trying to figure stuff out. When the messages start getting intercepted, is when it starts getting strange. Um. <laughs> It, it, it's it's less of an aggressive, um, otherworldly foreshadowing than we normally see in Lovecraft's books because it's heavily insinuated that it's just some dude doing all of this. Like, it's just a guy. He's like, oh, I think they're in league with the Migo. Like, yeah, you just sound crazy because it's just some dude intercepting letters or whatever. So, like, from the point of view of our main guy, he's very confused and concerned as to why it's happening, but he's not like, oh, my goodness, aliens are taking my friend's letters. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, the um, the it gets more and more intense. Like the the nightly meetings or nightly um, attacks, I guess I should be saying. <clears throat> excuse me. Start getting more and more intense between 
the humans slash the <coughs> amigo and um why i almost said um waitly um i'm combining two mm-hmm. different lovecraft yeah, names there different one there different thing um he starts sending out letters that are more and more intense and he's sending out more of these letters back and forth and once things have have gotten like as bad as they could possibly be like really really rough they're like oh they're out there talking to me we're shooting at each other my dogs are dying every night they're cutting my telephone lines and then all of a sudden uh i am now typing all my letters i can't write them anymore they just ignore that i'm also talking differently that's cool too don't worry about that come see me mm-hmm and there's that moment in the book where that's where the foreshadowing really, really hits home for any of, no matter how dense of a reader you are, namely me. Um, at that point, you're like, this is probably not him. Mm-hmm. Or, see, I, I didn't know my first reading if I thought that it was not him or if, like, I don't know. It's like, like I, 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 I was really uncertain. Um, uh, and if it wasn't him or if there was something else going on, just because I am certain that the brain in the jar with Akeley's name on it was, in fact, Akeley's brain. Absolutely. And, like, they, they didn't really have any reason for taking him to Yugath other than, like, you know, they really do like to take scholars and knowledgeable people with them. <clears throat> and so, like, it's... And, and, and so you, you could almost imagine that, like, they had a a human approach during the day and said, you know, and, and talked to him and said, hey, you know, we'd like you to do this and, like, somehow eventually convince him because, you know, you that that could be a – could have been – and, of course, obviously he wasn't on the road because he typed it, but – that really genuinely could have been an exciting prospect for him as much as he you know enjoyed getting the knowledge and 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 doing all that and the extra knowledge he could have got at Yugath. um uh, one could reasonably believe that he could have been convinced to make a trip to Yugath. potentially um mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is this is potentially there's two interesting things uh if you're going to go like dive into the deep depths of of what could have happened it could have been that they did talk him into it. It's possible. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem likely because given his attitude to having already been prospected already mm-hmm. um, and receiving, he did receive, um, I think he it was a letter or, or a note. It might have been something they said to him um, in one of the attacks. I can't remember now. Actually, you know, I, I take it back. I do remember it was during one of the attacks. They told him all the things that they would like to do. And he was talking about how it made his skin crawl. Uh, and it could have been that he mulled over it and thought over it and decided, I would like to have all this forbidden knowledge. I study this stuff. It'd be fantastic. Because that is the, the draw of some stories like um, um, like The Witch House, stuff like that. Um, and so that's real. So that could be the case. But it could also be the case that the reason that he didn't want him to bother with his brain in the jar, because I thought about this the other day, mm-hmm. is because, technically speaking, if they're time travelers, they could mm-hmm. have... Put them in a jar. Um, uh, the 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 Migo aren't the time travelers. You're thinking of the Great Race. No, 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 no. I am thinking of the Great Race as well. But also, they uh, this this is in um, um, darn it, darn it, darn it. Um, what's his name? Um, Joshi. Um, mm-hmm. was making the reference that they have the ability to take them to different eras as well. Which means he could have not only just went to Yugath, he could have also he could have after being in the jar we could actually be seeing um um uh, uh, he could have been sitting there with thousands of years worth of forbidden knowledge and thousands of trips and he could have been insane or he could have been what the other he could have been like saying if they would have turned him on he'd be like ah crap ah blah don't ah so that was another thing too it couldn't it couldn't it could have been that they kidnapped him and harvested his brain and if he would have talked he would have been like hey they harvested my brain and it, it kind of sucks and it could have also been like hey I told him I wanted to go and now I really regret it because I've seen some stuff uh, mm-hmm. either one of those things could have been the case but of course we're both speculating yes I am the speculation master so the the part of the story uh, that interests me the most is this is more 
Mm, this is implied a little less aggressively in the story, I think. I don't think it's just written out plainly in front of you, but I think mm-hmm. I th- I thought this right away, and I found out that um, this is a relatively common belief. The mm-hmm. fake man, who is clearly not our protagonist's friend... Who is, is not one of the Migo. Is not is one of the Migo. Yeah, so mm-hmm. not only is it not one of the Migo, my opinion is that that is actually... Physically, Nyarlathotep. Mm-hmm. To Nyarlathotep, mighty messenger, must all things be told. And he shall put on the semblance of men, the waxen mask and the robe that hides, and come down from the world of seven sons to mock. It is in that story, and it's the impl- mm-hmm. that's where the implication is heavily left. It's not spelled <clears throat> out that that is who that is, but it's pretty heavily implied. And it's pretty widely believed by people who talk about <coughs> this story that that is, in fact, Nyarlathotep. Which is, if that's the case, the reason why this story has so much gravity is because we actually get to sit in the room um, with one of the Elder Tours, finally. Um, this is the mm-hmm. equivalent of the, the sailors accidentally discovering Cthulhu in Relay. Uh, it's the it's the equivalent of that, just on a different scale, obviously. So this is a very rare moment in a Lovecraftian story. This does not happen often. We have Nyarlathotep, Cthulhu, and Dagon are really our only... Holy crap, check it out. Here's one of them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, we see things, but we don't always get to see, like, the actual Elder Chores. Sean's thinking about something. Yeah, well, I'm I'm trying to to see this. Um, uh, Sean's so this is from. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I, I I was I was I was checking this here. Um. Uh. uh I the there's a thing that I saw said that um. Uh, it's suggested um, uh, that uh, in, in a different story that um, uh, that uh, uh, Henry Akeley is the um, uh, is the illegitimate son of Abednego Akeley, and I heard the name Abednego mentioned in a uh, other than in the Bible. Um, uh, uh, mentioned in another Lovecraft book, and so I checked. And so I, I looked this up to see what it is, and apparently it's from the uh, the the name is mentioned. Abednego Akeley is mentioned in the Hoster cycle, which is not something that I've read. So it must not. It said it's partially by Lovecraft and partially by Ramsey Campbell, and this must be the part written by Ramsey Campbell. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that either. Mm. <clears throat> but it was, and that's what I was. On. Oh no! It okay. Never mind. It wasn't a bed go that I was thinking of. I was thinking of Obed. That's who I was thinking of. Thinking of oh what Obed Marsh? Yeah, Obed. When I was thinking of the word a bed go. I thought I'd heard that in a local store before, but all I'd heard was Obed. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're <clears throat> thinking of Obed Marsh then? Yep. Which is from absolutely. another really great story. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the I, I think I've always been the most intrigued by Nyarlathotep of all of the Lovecraftian creatures. Um, mm-hmm. Just because th- there's something much <coughs> creepier to me about one of these these monsters, these eldritch horrors, that actually has a sole purpose of coming down and trying to screw with men, uh, trying to, trying to actually, not necessarily kill them, um, try to give them knowledge, try to, um, just, just in general be a menace, but in a very strange way. Um, we do mm-hmm. get up close and personal with Nyarlathotep one other time. In the story, holy cow! I can't. Believe, I just had this thought, so I, I'm I'm struggling to remember 
the name of the story. The really long, the, drawn out story. Yeah, yeah. The, the the one where you're really close to him and physically see him. He identifies himself as Nerl Hotep and you yeah, speak with him. To and you. that is the and that is the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, yeah. Which by mm-hmm. the way is the most bizarre of all the stories. Holy cow. Fantastic, but so mm-hmm. bizarre. Yeah. <clears throat> and so all, he's the only one that we actually get up close and personal with. Yeah. And um uh, in this case, um uh, given how like he says, "Hey, um, uh, you should do this thing," to to the to the man, um, uh, and then the man does the thing, and then given the consequences of those actions, I think it's uh, I I I think it's time that I remind rem, rem, this time that I remind you, um, uh, the the listener to our podcast is advised to remember Nyarlath Hotep is a liar. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the entire I don't know if we really know what the real point of them taking these men as brains in a jar to other places really is I don't know if we actually know the point to that because they don't really care to give people you know rides and be like check out all our cool stuff you want to come see my house I've got toys like it's not what they're doing clearly so is it just to torment people? Is it just to give them the forbidden knowledge to drive them insane? I mean, clearly they're working very closely with Nyarlathotep because he's right there. So is that mm-hmm. is that it? That's the the kooky thing. Um, but yeah, that's definitely Nyarlathotep in the room, in my opinion. That's what I think mm-hmm. is going on. That's who I think is there. It makes the most sense that that's the case. And... Yeah, this one has more gravity because of that exact thing. Yeah. I am Which trying makes it very strange to, find... to me. While you're trying to find I have to say this quick thing. It makes it very yeah. strange to me. Um, because if that's the case, then we have a normal guy. Namely, um, <laughs> guys, <coughs> the guy who picks him up from the train station uh, when he arrives. Noise. Gosh, noise, noise, noise. So we essentially have <coughs> a human being who is just absolutely chilling with one of the greatest um, elder tours. Pause one second. sick child it sounds that way (coughs) so um uh there's a i'll tell you i'll tell you the the thing that i looked up and i I found it there's a book series called um uh uh merkaba writer is the book series um, uh, the first, yeah, the, the 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 first book in it is Tales of a High Plains Drifter. Uh, it's by Edward M. Erdelak, and every, every time someone talks about Nyarl Toto, it makes me think of this. Um, uh, and I, I found this right here. Um, I'll read it off to them. In Edward M. Erdelak's Merkaba Rider book series, Nyarl Hotep and Sauron from Tolkien's Middle Earth Legendarium are implied to be the same entity. Hmm. Okay. And that's okay. a very interesting line of thought. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, not to mention too. Um. Mm-hmm. It's also. Um. <coughs> so obviously, people just kind of take this concept and run with it. Um. But it's also implied that there are. Um, that there are many figures throughout history that have been Yarlathotep. Um. Mm-hmm. I think the list that people had given was Hitler, uh, mm-hmm. Tesla, believe it or not. Well, Nero thought it was um, based on Tesla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, specifically, people say, like, that's like mm-hmm. the concept of saying <laughs> even someone who's not evil, right? I mean, obviously, Tesla wasn't an yeah. evil person. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hashtag should have been Tesla. Um, mm-hmm. 
who else was there? Like the great pharaohs, uh, one of the great pharaohs that helped build the that was supposedly the one that started the building of the pyramids. Mm -hmm. uh, just random individuals like that that have that have done something massive to the detriment of technically to the detriment of mankind or to the vast jump in technology of mankind that could potentially bring them closer to the knowledge of the old ones that eventually go crazy. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> there's another thing I'm looking up. It said, um, uh, uh, and this is a very interesting thought. Uh, it said, um, uh, uh, in Game of Thrones, there are likely two individuals or entities that are, uh, um, uh, that are avatars of Nyarlathotep. And I haven't watched enough Game of Thrones to say this myself, but and I've definitely not read any of it. But um, uh, I want to know your opinion of this. The first one is this. Um, uh, uh, I said, in the universe of Game of Thrones, the many-faced god of the faceless men... Uh, appears to be an avatar of Narlathotep. Then it said, villains who serve as agents of chaos, like Peter Baelish, uh, and that's all, I guess that's also from Game of Thrones, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and the Joker are also likely avatars of Narlathotep. Um, uh, in the same vein as mythological creatures like Loki and Chernobyl. Which I can understand why... I can understand why Chernobog could be an avatar of Nyarlathotep. Chernobog literally means the black god. So. Uh huh. I don't really think Peter Baelish. Um, that's kind of lame. Um, the mm. mini faced god and then the guys who serve him that can change their faces and stuff. I would definitely agree with that. It's actually. I, I find that to be. I, I, well, I've, I've always kind of found that to be a very Lovecraftian element inside of Game of Thrones. Uh, because it's different than. Excuse me. Um, the way the rest of the the gods in Game of Thrones work, it, they the people operate with a very weird, different kind of deceitful magic, which is very, very much like Nyarlathotep, <coughs> and very much like a Lovecraftian horrific element, because what they do feels mm -hmm. very horrific, even though it's not technically that bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, d did I tell you, um, uh, uh, my favorite, uh, uh, my my favorite. Uh, or one of my favorite um, uh, Lovecraft bands. No, you haven't. It's the darkest of the hillside thickets. <clears throat> um, uh, Interesting name. Yeah, like uh, one of their albums is the Dukes of Al Hazred. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and then another one of their the albums of the is. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you're gonna love this one. Super um. Nice. Uh, uh, one of the albums is called Shadow Out of Tim. <laughs> I do love these. Mm -hmm. um, well, just because you've said it and I have to say it out loud, there's, um, mm -hmm. um, 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 oh, dang it. I forgot the name of the band I'm thinking of. It's not worth thinking about. It'd be a hard love. Uh, but, yeah, the, I, there's, um, I feel like it's kind of, vague to say or kind of stupid I'm sorry I'm, I'm very tired I'm trying to catch my third train of thought again I was going to go back to something I just said ah I found it um, mm -hmm. so Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones I don't see that at all I'm talking about him being an agent mm -hmm. of chaos well that's just because he's he, it's very but it's a very it's just a bunch of political moves and a few dead people and he ends up spoiler alert he ends up just getting stabbed so be kind of lame for that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. So whatever, he's just a dude. That's kind of lame. Mini face god, absolutely. So his name is Peter. Peter Baelish. Okay, because seeing how it was spelled, I would have said either Pater or Petir. Yeah, the Y throws you off. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like Petir like, makes the most sense, but I said Pater because I wouldn't think of. Uh, Garten, Rotten, Rotten, Martin would name somebody Petir. So I said Pater. Well, George Ronald Raul. <laughs> um, he did. He did confirm for 
um, the filming of the show that it's Peter. I'm like, wow, you're lame, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but did he confirm it because it was right or just because he didn't care? Hey, is his name Peter? Sure. Yeah, it's Peter. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> What's this one? I don't even remember anymore, dude. I'm trying to write this fifth book. I'm going to die soon. <laughs> <clears throat> The actual uh-huh. transcript of their conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad he finished Elden Ring before he finished. Uh, oh yeah, I couldn't series. care less if he finishes Game of Thrones. Just finished. I'm glad you finished Elden Ring. Thank you. Appreciate your contribution mm-hmm. to society that I gave a crap about. Oh oh um, uh, after the after the the last series of that show came out, um, uh, uh, Demolition Ranch came out with a uh, came out with a new T-shirt that you would have liked. Um, uh, it was, it had a gun on it, because all Demolition Ranch shirts have guns on them, but it, uh, underneath it, it said, the night is dark and full of terrors, but they had crossed out terrors and wrote terrible endings. <laughs> this is accurate. <clears throat> that did have a terrible ending. I, I, we're really <clears throat> hard lefting now. Me and I knew we would do this. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Is that it why is you really weren't worried bad. about take, grabbing another story? This is why. This is exactly why. <clears throat> Did you actually watch all of Game of Thrones? No, I never finished season two. Oh, it's worth watching. Uh, my wife and I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're big fans. We've watched the entire series together three times now. And we do really mm-hmm. like it, and we do suffer through the last season to say that we did. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. For me, I love endings um, that leave some questions. Um, I don't mm-hmm. like all my loose ends tied up. It's fine if you do. But I like to speculate. I like to have fan theories. I like to sit and talk about it. I think that's cool. For me, a wonderful ending. You're not going to care if I spoil this, are you? <clears throat> no. Okay, so everyone everywhere, uh, go watch it really quickly, then come back. It only takes about 50 or 60 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the end of it, um, Daenerys Targaryen eventually turns into the female version of the Mad King and goes a little insane and burns down all of King's Landing and kills tons of people. And Jon Snow says, oh, well, we can't have that, so he stabs her. And then, after he stabs her, we start rushing back and forth to tie up all the loose ends. We pick a new king, which is a stupid one. We don't solve a lot of the really important things that I cared about, like why all the blue-eyed people are making swastikas out of dead people's arms. I really would have liked to have known that, to be honest. We don't mm-hmm. type any of those loose ends, but we type, like, okay, John, he's actually a bad guy now, and he can't do anything. Uh, we're going to send him off to the Night's Watch. We're like, yeah, we could have figured that. That's a happy ending. Stupid. And they go on, and they go on, and they go on. I was like, oh, that's fine. That's dandy. But what I would have really loved is mm-hmm. if she would have gone mad, but, like, actually taken over and spent some time being the queen and then starts to try to set people afire like the other one. And then she was like in the throne room shouting and ranting and raving like the Ma- like the Mad King did. And then anyone, it would have been fine with anyone. But I think it would have been really poetic if it would have been Jamie again. You just see him, like she, as she's yelling and screaming and burning people alive, you just see him pull out a sword and start walking up to her while her back's turned. And then the screen just goes black and that's the end of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. That would have been phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. I would have loved that. Like, what's going to yeah. happen? Is it going to happen again? Are we starting the cycle all over again? Was this a perfect circle? That would have been amazing. Well, I, no. I was going to say, if if they had, you had a Mad King and someone killed the Mad King, um, uh, uh, and, like, like, and actually it, it would have been better if it wouldn't have been Jamie, I think, because how can you have – because it, it, it should be a cycle. That would be really cool. But how can you have the same person keep the same role in two cycles? That's true, and that's the reason why I think it's still... I think if we would have done it and we would have made it believably, I think it would have still been Jon Snow killing her, and that's great, mm-hmm. and that's fine. I was just saying I would have been fine if it would have been Jamie once again stabbing a Mad King in the back. Um, that would have been mm-hmm. fine with me, but I feel like Jon Snow mm-hmm. would have had to have been the character. That being said, there's something about that that just leaves this big gaping hole of... you know Now it's like everything's tied up, we have a new king, he's going to fix stuff, everything's exciting... Let's go back to normal. Instead of that, if you would have had this huge chaotic ending that just symbolizes everything has come back to the beginning again. Because this this show is really very about the politics of our universe that we're in. And how it's all just a cycle mm-hmm. of greedy, terrible people doing greedy, terrible things. And if we have that, and that's a staple of the show, 
why can't we have that kind of ending? And why can't we have um, the exact same thing happen all over again? It just kind of symbolizes this is going to keep going. It's going to keep going and going and going just like it is. I love that. It's bleak. It's abysmal. It's Lovecraftian. I brought it back. You're welcome. And it'd just be be fantastic. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. But yeah. And that's why Game of Thrones has had a bad ending. That's what we were here to talk about, right? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. See, we hey, who was the first artist the to give Nyarlath Hotep three arms? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Because it looks really weird. It's really weird looking to have him have three arms. Three arms and three legs. There's a bunch of... Uh, uh, there's one particular bestiary that someone wrote in a very that wrote oh my goodness that they illustrated in a very very modern sort of hr is it hr geiger or is it just hr geiger, geiger. Mm-hmm. hr geiger uh i'm too tired to think if, but in a very geiger style in that nyarlathotep essentially looks like alien um mm-hmm. which i think is kind of lame but um every other beastie from it looks fantastic even that one only has two arms. I think the three arms is kind of weird. Because mm-hmm. he's humanoid. Okay, so you know that... And I don't think this is this is intentional. I think it's just crouching. Um, uh, But you know the classic... Um, uh, uh, the classic, like, anime girl, uh, butt in the air, elbows on the floor kind of thing? Oh, yeah. The I'm interested, but we can't talk about it. Anime girl pose. Um, uh, well, no, the, 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 the presenting one. Like, hey, look, here is this. Come on. That that pose. Literally, yes. I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you now. Mm-hmm. But th- this this picture of Alien. I was looking up some H.R. Geiger stuff. Um, uh, this picture, there's a picture of, and I don't think it's intentional because of the way the pose is, but it sure looks like Alien is doing that thing. I was going to say, I think you just have just rule 34 at Alien. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I'm going to send this to way, you. Don't like, open up your Open up your Discord. Open up your Discord, because I don't think it's intentional, but it's definitely what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to put that on the Discord. Yeah, I'm going to put that uh, on the Discord right without now. Any without context, context. With, without yeah. context, with no one knowing what we're talking about. Is this from an HR Geiger yeah. exhibit? I believe so. I, I sure would like that. There we go. Now it's on the Discord, sure and you guys have no see. idea. You guys have no idea what 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 the the point of this <laughs> is until right until general. this episode comes out. <laughs> okay, but then you get here. You hear, you'll hear it. You go. Oh, that's what that's supposed to be. Well, anyways, <laughs> um, I went ahead and ubooed it. Continue. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, we really struggled with um, uh, this one. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's only fitting that I said next to nothing because usually it's the other way around. I'm usually the one that's that's flabbing. Um. Uh, Flapping, jaw flapping. Um, uh, but um, uh, I tend to wax more autistic about Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Here's the same H.R. Geiger exhibit, but with a, a female version of Alien, with like, like looking like a human with human boobs. With a long penis coming out of one of her boobs, and she's blowing it. I am frightened. <clears throat> like you thought I was joking. You thought? Oh my goodness. HR guy is a weird dude. Why are all of we can see the ribs through the? Mm-hmm. Chest too. That's strange. Yeah, I think we are cool looking here. We, we, I think we've gone on more than long enough. We've got to stop. <laughs> yeah. We absolutely must Wait. stop. Yeah, this is the end. Uh, this is definitely the most boring episode we've ever recorded, and that's the way we like it. 
we do love that. We we've said that before because we meant it before, and now we mean it again. Mm-hmm. So join us next time. Will Tyler get breakfast? Will he finally be able to take a poop because he's out of fiber? We'll find out next time. Ooh, breakfast! I think I might go to Chick Fil A. No, oh, I don't have a Chick Fil A. I have. A, you have one in Muncie. You could go there. I'm not driving to Muncie for Chick Fil A. If I drive to Muncie, I'm getting Panda. We need to stop this recording. Bye!